Now we move into the third time period covered in AP U.S. history, covering the years 1754 through the year 1800, during which a lot of important things will happen. It is also good for you to know that this is the first time period that a potential DBQ question could be drawn from, since DBQs will come from eras 3 through 8, although topics and ideas could partially extend into the earlier or later time periods. The key concepts for this time period focus on British attempts to exert more control over the American colonies, as Britain finally recognized the importance of the colonies to the overall empire. But the colonies were determined to pursue self-government, and thus came the Revolutionary War. The key concepts also focus on the ideals that inspired the new governments that were created in the wake of independence, and the challenges they faced, especially as America expanded, and that expansion led to competition over resources, boundaries, and trade. Some of the key topics covered in this unit will include the causes and effects of the French and Indian War, the idea of taxation without representation, and the philosophical foundations of the American Revolution, the American Revolution itself, and the influence of those revolutionary ideals after the fact, the government created under the Articles of Confederation and their challenges, the Constitutional Convention and the debates over ratifying this new document, the Constitution itself, shaping the new republic with the early presidents in charge, developing an American identity, as well as movement within the early republic. Now this unit covers the time period 1754 to 1800, and in this video we're going to begin by talking about the French and Indian War, specifically the causes and effects of that war. This was not a conflict between the French and the Indians, as one might think for, based on the name. It was a conflict between the British and the French, and the French allied themselves with several groups of Native American Indians. And to be fair, so did the British, but their alliances weren't as important for this particular conflict. This was primarily a battle for economic and political advantage in North America amongst the European colonial empires. So for our purposes, it's the French and the Native Americans versus the British. For a little bit of background, it is important to remember that multiple European empires were seeking to profit from New World riches. Spain had, of course, been present even before Britain and had begun expanding into the southwest and up the coast of California. But as those were so distant from the British colonies, it would really be the French that are going to touch off the battle for control of North America. The French had long neglected truly building an empire in the New World, settling mostly for fur trading outposts scattered throughout the Mississippi River Valley and eastern Canada along the St. Lawrence River. But once France gained control of the mouth of the Mississippi River, however, expansion into farming, particularly for grains in the upper Midwest, put the French into a position to block English expansion deeper into the continent. Disputes in Europe over control of the continent and of trade with the New World led to the outbreak of a series of wars. The First War, often called the Nine Years' War or the War of the Grand Alliance, was a major conflict between Louis XIV of France and a European-wide coalition, including Austria and the Holy Roman Empire, the Dutch Republic, Spain, England, etc. By 1689, it had spread to the North American colonies, where it was known as King William's War. The war was largely caused by the fact that the treaties and agreements that were reached at the end of King Philip's War were not being followed, and the English were particularly alarmed that the French were, probably, giving aid to Native Americans, meaning selling them weapons. There were numerous raids by Native tribes on frontier colonial settlements, while the Spanish, who eventually allied with France, attacked outlying settlements in the Carolinas. There was an attempt by colonial forces to capture Quebec, but it failed, and for the remainder of the war, the English colonists were primarily engaged in defensive operations, skirmishes, and various retaliatory raids. The Treaty of Ryswick, signed in 1697, ended the war between the two colonial powers, reverting the colonial borders to what they had been before the war. Five years later, war broke out again, known in Europe as the War of the Spanish Succession. It was triggered by the death in 1700 of the last Habsburg king of Spain, the childless Charles II. 
he had named his grand nephew philip the duke of anjou the grandson of the king of france as heir upon his deathbed but fearing the growing power of france england the dutch republic austria and allies in the holy roman empire declared war once again the war began in europe and spread to north america where it is known as queen anne's war the war there involved numerous native american tribes allied with each side spain eventually allied with france launched attacks on the carolinas to the north native americans attacked frontier settlements and the english colonists launched an attack on quebec which failed although they did win control of some land in eastern canada specifically newfoundland and nova scotia after the treaty of utrecht which ended the war in 1713 there were other treaties that ended the fighting in europe in addition though the british also gained some trading rights in spanish america after an uneasy peace which was briefly broken by a skirmish in 1739 between the british and the spanish in the caribbean known as the war of jenkins ear the nations would once again be at war the war began in europe where it was known as the war of the austrian succession in 1740 because it related to a battle over who would rule following the death of the holy roman emperor charles ii once again france allied itself with spain and once again when the fighting spread to north america this time in 1744 it would become known as king george's war and at that time a force of new england militia invaded new france with the goal of capturing quebec in georgia james oglethorpe led a colonial army that managed to repulse spanish attacks meaning georgia held up to its purpose of primarily being a buffer colony to the north a force of new englanders captured louisbourg a major french fortress which controlled access to the st lawrence river which is where quebec and montreal both sit but in the peace treaty that ended the war in 1748 britain agreed to give louisbourg back to the french in exchange for political and economic gains in india and there hadn't been enough time for montreal or quebec to fall into the hands of the americans new englanders in particular were furious about the loss of the fort that they had fought bled and died to win for england leading to the beginning of some resentment as you can see the first three wars between england and france focus primarily on battles in europe and only secondarily on conflict in the colonies and really the colonies portion was very small in comparison all three of those early wars began as fighting in europe and spread to the colonies and most of the time it wasn't even large-scale military forces being sent to the colonies from europe to participate in the battles that did occur in the new world it was mostly fought by local militias in the fourth and final war however the fighting will actually begin in the colonies and then spread to europe still the war was actually a smaller conflict in the context of a much larger global conflict between the british and the french called the seven years war that breaks out a couple of years after the one here starts so the seven years war is the worldwide conflict and the french and indian war is that part of the conflict that occurred on american soil it just lasted longer by now though both england and france were recognizing how important their colonies were and in the intervening time between the end of King George's War and the beginning of this French and Indian War, they both had shipped large numbers of troops overseas to North America, rather than simply relying on what they viewed as amateur colonial forces. The British felt that the French provoked the war by building a chain of forts in the Ohio River Valley, preventing British westward expansion. In an attempt to stop the French from completing work on Fort Duquesne, which is located at the start of the Ohio River in what is today downtown Pittsburgh, the governor of Virginia, who claimed this area, sent a small militia under the command of a young colonel named George Washington to warn the French against encroaching on British holdings in the Ohio River Valley. Washington's troops attacked this position, gaining a small initial victory, but ultimately were forced to surrender to a superior force of French soldiers and their Native American allies on July 3, 1754. Now, Washington had attempted to build a small fortress of his own that he called Fort Necessity, 
but he had been unable to hold it. Therefore, the cause of this French and Indian War is essentially territorial disputes in the Ohio River Valley. Even before Washington was defeated, however, the British government recognized that having a more organized colonial response to frontier defense, trade, and westward expansion would be a good thing, and they had called for representatives from several colonies to meet at a congress held in Albany, New York. They also invited a delegation from the Iroquois Confederacy to join them with the hopes of allying with this powerful Native American association that the French were not allied with because the French were allied with the Iroquois' enemies. Delegates from seven colonies attended and voted on a plan called the Albany Plan of Union, developed by Benjamin Franklin, that would provide for an intercolonial government a system for recruiting troops and collecting taxes in order to provide for the common defense. However, each colony was too jealous of its own taxation powers to accept the plan, and it never took effect. The significance of the plan, though, and why you should still know about it, was that it set a precedent for the later, more revolutionary congresses that would meet in the 1770s. Now, back to the war. For the most part, the war went very badly for the British and the Americans. Add to that, as the war expanded into the larger global conflict of the Seven Years' War, the British implemented policies that proved to be quite unpopular with the colonists. First, the British practiced forced impressment of American men, making them join the ranks of the Royal Navy. Second, throughout the war, the British quartered troops in colonial homes, and if anyone resisted feeding and housing the soldiers at their own expense, they would be threatened with violence. But then in 1760, King George II died, and his grandson, George III, took over. And this young, headstrong king was determined not to just reign and let Parliament and his advisors mostly run the country. But instead, George III wanted to truly rule his empire and to win this ongoing war. Most of the fighting had actually now ended in North America, though it did continue in Europe. But by 1763, the French had lost, and they negotiated a treaty to bring the war to an end. The Treaty of Paris of 1763 resulted in France losing control of nearly all of their New World territories, except for a few islands in the Caribbean and a couple tiny ones off the coast of Newfoundland. Spain also ceded control of Florida to Britain and then received Louisiana territory from France as compensation. And so now we look at the effects of this war. It very much changed economic, political, governmental, and social relations amongst the three European powers, their colonies, and the people that inhabited those territories. France and Britain would both suffer tremendously financially because of the war, and it was this financial consideration that caused the change in the relationship between Britain and her colonies. Now, because the land in the Ohio River Valley was under British control, American colonists began to seize their opportunity to push westward, seeking new land. This migration naturally intensified conflicts with Native Americans who already lived there. The leader of the Ottawa tribe, Chief Pontiac, led raids against the encroaching colonists in Detroit and other military forts in Virginia and Pennsylvania. And seeking to protect the colonists from more violence with the natives of the region, King George III issued the Royal Proclamation of 1763, which outlined the division and administration of this newly conquered territory. It also specified that the lands west of the Appalachian Mountains were to be left to Native American populations, a provision that was largely ignored by many who sought to claim lands in the West, many of which had been promised by various colonial officials as a bounty for joining the war effort in the first place and being told they couldn't go there would lead to increasing resentment of the British government by these Americans. And a second major consequence of this war was the fact that it was expensive. As a result of fighting the war, British national debt roughly doubled, and with the size of the British Empire increasing, the cost of running all of the colonies would increase tremendously as well. So in order to pay for all that, the British Parliament decided to raise the revenue that it needed 
to manage its empires by raising taxes on the American colonies, which would prove to be a very big mistake since that was just another step in building that colonial resentment to the point that war will break out. And we'll take a look at that taxation in the next video.